while in the previous unit we talked about very simple handcrafted similarity metrics this unit is about learning similarity metrics from data using the power of deep neural networks the motivation for this is that handcrafted features and similarity metrics do not take into account all relevant geometric and radiometric invariances or occlusion patterns and of course it would be beneficial if you could learn all of this from data rather than trying to handcraft the feature descriptors as also deep learning has revolutionized uh, recognition for example where handcrafted sift descriptors were used before um, but now all of the uh, features are actually learned so we want to exploit the same principle here but still staying within the block matching regime so far so we're, we're using a similar algorithm for matching we just want to have a better similarity metric unfortunately the world is too complex to specify this by hand that's why we need learning and the observation here done in this seminal paper by Spontar and LeCun is that the matching cost computation can actually be treated as an image classification problem uh, the idea behind is very simple if I take a patch from the left image and a patch from the right image and I have the ground truth disparity so this needs of course an annotated data set where we know the ground truth disparity and it needs a sufficiently large annotated data set then we can uh, we can label these patches based on the ground truth disparity so for instance in this case this is the correct displacement so the patch appears similar this would be a good match and then here in this case this would be a bad match because the disparity is slightly off so we can assign this good match versus bad match labels and then turn this into a classification problem where we're trying for a particular left patch to classify all potential right patches in the right image and then the classifier should tell us which one is the correct one amongst all these hypotheses here's an overview of the method the method assumes a large annotated data set and one of the first large annotated disparity data sets was actually one of our data sets the kitty data set um, in 2012 and then in 2015 which provided each uh, over 200 annotated images and uh, much more raw images still that also have uh, disparity ground truth from which these models can be trained one has to say that the Siamese theory networks that we talk about in this unit are still much more label efficient and data efficient because they are just trying to learn uh, features and similarity matrix compared to this end-to-end -end stereo estimation techniques that we're going to discuss in the last unit but still they require um, quite a bit of data for training now given that we have trained such a patch classifier if you will we can now calculate features for each of the two images using this learned model and we can correlate these features between both images using a simple dot product or a more sophisticated multi-layer perceptron to compare these patches and then we can find the maximum for every pixel the simple winner takes all strategy that we have discussed in the previous unit or we can what's also been done in this paper to get slightly better performance run a global optimization algorithm that incorporates some smoothness assumptions about the problem and that's something that we're going to discuss in the next unit so here in this unit we're still focusing on the block matching setup in the original paper two architectures for this matching problem have been proposed um, one which i call learned similarity and the other i, I call a cosine similarity and the way they differ is that for this first architecture what is happening is that we take a patch in the left image and a patch in the right image and run convolutions to compute features but then we concatenate these features and run another uh, fully connected multi-layer perceptron that outputs the similarity score for these uh, two patches it's still a siamese network it's called siamese because we have these two branches here which are the same they share the parameters so the same convolution convolutional neural network is applied to the left input patch and to the right input patch but then there is this um, uh, expensive part here 
while being more expressive potentially than the simpler solution here on the right, um, it's very slow to compute because now for every pixel, we have W times H, which is window uh, image width times image height pixels in the reference image times all possible disparity hypotheses. So it's a very large number here. It's maybe 300,000 times 100 for VGA image resolution, which is rather small. So we have a very large number of times that we actually need to concatenate these two features and then run an MLP on top. So this is very slow because we ne need to do a lot of MLP evaluations while these two parts here are rather fast. So a simpler method is to remove this MLP here altogether and shift all the burden uh, of this uh, similarity metric computation to the features. So what's happening here is we compute using a confinet the features um, and we can do this at inference time then of course using uh, um, you know, uh, reusing computation as in normal CNNs, we can do this across the entire images. So it's very fast in a few milliseconds, you get the feature for both the left and the right images for all the pixels. And then we normalize across the channel dimension for all the pixels, and this is the feature. And then we compute a simple dot product between these two. And um, uh, this dot product is then directly the similarity score. And that's called the cosine similarity. So these two operations with this in the Siamese branch here with the shared weights at inference time are really fast because we can run them on the entire images. And then this dot product, which is the thing that we have to do W times H times D times is of course much faster than running an MLP. And so the entire evaluation here runs like two orders of magnitude faster than for the learned similarity model. And interestingly, um, it doesn't lead to a significant drop in performance. So performance is roughly on par between these two. And this is um, also an architecture that has been used by many follow up works, because it's so fast. Now, how does training work in these models? Well, the training set is composed of patch triplets. And it uses a special loss function that we're going to talk about. A patch triplet is composed of a patch from the left image. That is the reference for which we want to compute the correspondence. And then we have a patch in the right image that is a negative. That's an incorrect patch. And then we have a patch that's the positive example. That's the correct patch that's exactly displaced by the disparity, by the ground truth disparity. And uh, this X this bold X here are just uh, two dimensional coordinates. These are the image coordinates in the left and the right image. Now the question is of course, how to choose the negative examples and how to choose the positive examples. And what this paper does is it does hard negative mining. And the reason for this is that if we would just choose negatives everywhere else than the positive patches, then this would uh, lead to a very simple classification problem because most patches actually look very uh, dissimilar from the correct patch. But what's happening here is um, what we're trying to do here is we're trying to find negative examples that are actually quite similar, but still not correct to the correct example. And the way this is done is by choosing a negative patch or the coordinate for the center of the negative patch by taking, well, the correct patch location, which is x left minus the disparity plus an offset o of course at the, scale, at the same scan line we're in the rectified setup where this offset o neck is drawn from a uniform distribution with some thresholds uh, n low negative low and negative high in the negative range and in the positive range and then we take positive examples um, by also like moving to the correct location xl minus d and then taking offsets that are drawn from a smaller range closer to the correct location from minus positive high to positive high. So here D denotes the true disparity for a pixel that's provided as the ground truth. And typically, I think that's also what's done in this paper, the hyperparameters for this hard negative mining are um, uh, that uh, the positive patches from a range minus one to plus one, and then the negative 
are assembled from ranges three to six. So they are quite close to the positive example, but they are still far enough away such that the classifier has a chance to classify them correctly. So here's an example. Here, um, let's assume this is the correct location here, the center one, um, where we have the reference location minus the disparity. And then we, to the center location, we add this offset O. And that depends, that offset is chosen from these ranges that I mentioned before. So for instance, the positive examples are chosen very, very close to this uh, correct location. And the negative examples are chosen further away, but not too far away. So from three to six, let's say, minus three to minus six and, and plus three to plus six pixels, but not from here, let's say. And this leads to, um, the strategy leads to patches in this particular case here that look like this. So here we have the correct location. Here we have it shifted by one pixel. And here we have it shifted by three or four pixels into the left and right direction. And this is then is, are then the hard examples that the classifier has to distinguish from these examples. And if the classifier is able to distinguish these from those, then it's also able to distinguish easier ones from the correct ones, easier negative ones from the correct ones. Now, this is about the triplet creation. Now, how do we use these triplets to train this classifier? And when I'm saying classifier, it's actually not exactly correct because we're using a regressor. So this, this model here is not outputting a classification score, but it's outputting a similarity score. How similar are two patches? And, and the same for this more complex architecture here. So what we do here in order to learn this model to predict the correct similarity score is we use a hinge loss. And that hinge loss is defined as such. It's the maximum of zero and a margin M. That's a tunable hyperparameter. Typically in the paper, I think 0 0.2 is used. Plus S minus minus S plus where um, S minus is the score of the network for the negative example. So it's the score when inputting the reference patch in the left image and in the right image, the negative example. And S plus is the score of the network for the positive example. So inputting the reference patch and the positive example. And of course we want to make sure that um, uh, the loss um, is, uh, well, that, that the, the score of the positive example is higher than the score of the negative example. Now this loss is zero when the similarity of the positive example is greater than the similarity of the negative example by at least this margin M. And having this margin M prevents separation or having this hinge loss uh, prevents separation of uh, positive and negative features that are already well separated. That's why we have this hinge loss and the margin. And it gives the model the capacity to focus on the hard cases because things that are already well separated where S minus is already much smaller than S plus we don't need to separate more. So we should disable the gradients for them during training. So here's an example of this. What I've illustrated here is the loss of in the, let's look at the left case here of uh, the loss over uh, of S uh, or with respect to the value S minus. You can see this hinge loss curves here um, for different fixed values with different colors of S plus. So let's consider for instance, S plus equals zero. In this case, um, the hinge loss is um, linear if S minus is bigger than minus 0 0.2 and it's zero if it's already smaller than minus 0 0.2, which means that if, well, if, if, the, if S minus is bigger than zero, uh, zero, then of course we want to decrease it. So we are in this linear part here, but we also want to decrease it if it's, if it's already smaller than S plus, but it's only smaller by let's say 0 0.1 here. So if we are in this triangle area here, but if it's already smaller by 0 0.2 than zero, then uh, we want to ignore it and we want to save capacity of the model for other harder cases um, that are harder to distinguish. Right. And the same holds true for these other curves. So here we have S plus equals 0 0.4. In this case, we introduce gradients for training until S minus is 0 0.2 or smaller. And then we ignore this example during training. And the same, this is vice versa. If 
So here we have the curves for S plus. Let's say if S minus is equal to zero, then we want to decrease, or we want to increase S plus as long as we are still smaller than 0 0.2. But if we are already at 0 0.2 or higher, then we are 0 0.2 higher than zero. And so we can ignore this because they are already separated well enough and we can focus on other examples. What does that look like? Here are the winner takes all results. We have the left input image from a kitty example from the original kitty 2012 data set. Here is the result of the Siamese network compared to a standard block matching result. And you can see that this is a, a much less noisy and, and it's a better result than this block matching result. So learning actually improves the quality of the similarity metric. Now, if we run a global optimization, and that's something we're going to talk about in the next unit, on in addition to this cost computation, we get even better disparity maps that you can see here. And we do this for the left image and for the right image. And then we can do a consistency check where outliers are removed and here colored based on their occlusion relationships. You can see that things that are half occluded are in green here. And uh, we obtain uh, very nice disparity maps. The original version of this algorithm was implemented on CUDA with Lua Torch 7 and run on a Titan X. Training required about five hours. They trained it for 45 million, the 45 million training examples, these little patches. Remember that training only requires patches, not entire images. That's why it's rather data efficient. And they trained it for 16 epochs using SGD. And then inference for a single pair of images takes about six seconds for the simple architecture and 100 seconds for this complex architecture where an MLP has to be evaluated for each disparity hypothesis.